All right. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, we had some technical difficulties the other day, so we were not able to record. So I'm just going to go over this again. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, finding resources during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, let me flip over here. All right. So welcome. We're going to be talking about finding and accessing resources during this time. So we've all seen uh, COVID-19 take a hold of Texas, and there are some um, updated resources. And then also agencies are changing. Uh, they're taking steps to encourage social distancing. So this changes how services might be um, delivered and what is actually available right now. So. A little disclaimer, this is a psychoeducational webinar uh, hosted by Ashley McLean, an MSW field student, that's me, and Rachel Lindbergh, a counseling psychology practicum student. Uh, we're both supervised by Mark Rem, the LPC, LPC and Director of Angelo State Counseling Services. So this webinar is not intended as psychotherapeutic treatment. Um, it's only intended to be informational and educational. So should you experience any discomfort or you have any questions or anything, uh, please contact the counseling services um, to inquire about scheduling counseling or um, the crisis helpline if you're in need of immediate assistance. And then a little bit about me. I'm Ashley McLean. I am an NSW field student here at the Counseling Center. Um, so I conduct initial assessments on students as well as provide uh, case management services. Uh, and then I have goals of working with young adults and then eventually in community development. And then Rachel is a counseling psychology practicum student with um, ASU's Counseling Services. Who she conducts intake assessments and then also provides individual couples and group counseling. Uh, she plans to seek licensure as a licensed professional counselor to work with individuals, couples, and families. So she wants to work with a little bit of everyone. All right, so today specifically, we are going to cover a bunch of different resources. So we're going to start off with mental health providers, and then um, we are going to talk about support services, such as child care options and things like that. And then we're also going to talk about housing, bill and food assistance, and then crisis interventions and hotlines that you can contact at this time. So to kind of start this off, talk about how to find a resource. Um, so this might not be something that is generally um, known or thought about, but uh, so the kind of process to finding a resource is first and foremost, identifying your need and then trying to be as specific with that need as you can be and to kind of break it down to its base layer, and then searching for appropriate and local, if possible, resources. So um, <clears throat> uh, you want to, this can be done through like a simple Google search of searching um, San Angelo, I need help paying my bills. Um, and then also most communities have a community website. So the city of San Angelo has a website. And then also um, the majority of cities around the state that can link you up with some resources or some more information on what's available. Okay, and then finding what meets your needs. So there might be only one resource or there might be several, but they're targeted to a little bit different things. So finding the one that is going to work for you and um, this might include calling them or um, seeing what their processes looks like and what their um, time frame looks like. And then reaching out to them. So reach out to them and then following up with them. Especially right now, a lot of places are being inundated with them being flooded with a lot of um, people needing assistance. So making sure to follow up with them to make sure, um, hey, 
remember me let's get let's go let's go <laughs> all right so now some mental health services so the asu counseling center uh if you're a student this is a service that is already included in your tuition um so you do not have to pay us when you come in for a session and right now we are open we are not open to students coming into the office but we have the ability to use this platform webex for a skype -like session we don't use skype because it's not safe um and then this platform is a hipaa compliant platform that is secure and um well or well, it's secure and it creates that kind of face to face feel of um, the video sharing. It's, of course, nowhere near being the same as being in person, but that might um, be beneficial. Um, and then also, we have the ability to do um, telephone appointments as well. Um, and then West Texas Counseling, and then that's our phone number and our email address. If you're interested, if you um, think that you might need, if you even if you feel like, oh, well, I'm just a little bit stressed right now, I don't think that I need counseling. If it, you are overwhelmed, if you um, have a feeling that this might be something that's beneficial in your life, um, please reach out. Um, even if you just come to one consultation appointment, if you just have one question, if you just want a little bit of tools on how to deal with stress, um, we can definitely help you out. Um, all right. <clears throat> and then West Texas Counseling and Guidance is one of the uh, main community providers in, um, in uh, the San Angelo community. So um, their phone number is 325. 486 talk uh, or 8255. Um, they are right now only offering teletherapy options to clients. So either on the phone or in a Skype like session like this. Um, and then we have, but their MCOT. <laughs> okay. Uh, and they still have a crisis intervention line. A suicide, their zero suicide initiative. Um, and then we have HS Counseling. Um, this is one of the only um, counseling offices that's not a private practice um, that is still offering in person and teletherapy options at this time. So if right now you just really need that face to face interaction um, and you really want that connection with a mental health professional. Ages counseling is going to be the best bet. And then also Rivercrest Hospital is still open and um, functioning. All right, so some online resources that are not specific to this community. And then, of course, there are several other mental health care providers in and around the San Angelo community. If you um, there are private practice people, I just try to touch on some of the agencies of like the big corporate um, agencies around the community. Um, okay, so some online resources. So psychologytoday.com, especially if you do not live in San Angelo and you don't have access or you're not in an area where you can access the resources that I previously stated. Um, psychologytoday.com is an awesome resource to find mental health care providers in your area. And you can also um, their website, you can search by zip code. So you can plug in your zip code. It'll show you all the therapists in and around that area. You can then filter that search by whether you want a male or female counselor. The age group, their target, um, their like focus, their targeted practice. Um, you can really use, utilize this resource to find the perfect therapist for you, the perfect mental health care provider for you. Everyone is unique, and that includes mental health care providers, and not everyone is going to work well with everyone. Um, 
therapists and mental health care providers may not have an approach that works well with you and that's totally fine. Um, so psychologytoday.com is a great resource to find me someone who's going to meet your needs and match well with you. Um, and then if you find someone who you don't necessarily mesh with, mesh with um, you can always uh, transition to different, <laughs> you can utilize it to find someone else. Um, okay. And then the Awake Knit Network has some free online meditations, uh, for resources for social distancing. So this website linked here has like so many different mindfulness exercises and mindfulness um, little meditations and uh, resources during this time. And then also virusanxiety.com. This is an awesome resource as well. Um, it provides care for your coronavirus anxiety. It's a toolkit. It, um, you can ask experts, you can go over anxiety. It has links to different meditations, how to feel with isolation. If you're a parent, information for you. Um, if you're facing financial fears, it links to some articles about that. Um, and they have a daily mantra. Mantra. So today is, I choose to focus on what I can control. So that's an awesome mantra for this time where we can't really control a lot of what's going on in our life. So and that cre can create a lot of stress. So focusing on things that you can control is an awesome way of, uh, yeah, that's awesome. And then a little meditation. So this um, website links to several different articles that are Awesome, awesome, awesome resources. Um, and then the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, or the ADAA, has a coronavirus anxiety webpage. So this also links to some awesome quick links of, with um, managing anxiety. So that, like here, it has a video, Managing Coronavirus Anxiety Tips and Strategies for Families. So this can be a specific um, to families. So if you're at home right now, if you um, move back in with your parents and you have siblings and you're having a lot of family stress right now, <laughs> and this is an awesome um, little resource and they have blog posts. So you can just comb through all of that and see read whatever you would like to read, watch a video. Um, and then the CDC also has this COVID-19 stress and coping guide. Ah, on that. Let's go there since we're going to all of these. <laughs> um, so it goes through some good coping skills. If you're a parent, how to support your child. Um, and different ways to keep in touch. And then, um, yeah, so it goes through just a lot of good uh, coping skills, how to manage the stress, how to keep the stress from turning into anxiety. Um, all right, and then we have some support services. So the MHMR of the Concho Valley has had a lot of um, changes. So a lot of their day hub programs, their IDD programs are being limited, but right now their mobile crisis outreach team is continuing to provide crisis screenings um, with a heightened awareness of preventative actions to stay healthy. Um, the mental health crisis respite remains open while utilizing safety precautions, the um, IDD dual diagnosis clinic, adult and children's mental health clinics are continuing to provide services utilizing their CDC safety protocols. And then the adult outpatient clinic and family youth guidance center will limit the number of people entering the lobbies of each facility, but they're still trying to um, 
keep open and keep uh, keep chugging along. All right, so the disability connections of San Angelo, the Contra Valley, um, is temporary canceling all activities, but they are still. If you need, uh, if you would like to schedule an appointment or speak with a staff member, they're asking people to contact them. The local family shelter, um, right now, they have some individuals in their um, residential program, but right now they're only accepting new clients who are deemed to be in immediate danger and located in the counties that are served. So. Um, that is like the Contra Valley area of Palm Green County and <laughs> our little web. Um, so, um, and they're only utilizing essential staff and their non-residential services have been transitioned to over the phone. So a lot of their case management and therapy um, sessions have been uh, moved to over the phone. And then the Open Arms Rape Crisis Center, they are um, still trying to provide every service that they are able to. So they are trying to still provide a police and um, hospital accompaniment. Uh, the hospital is probably a little bit interrupted with the updates in uh, visitor allowance. And then um, but they're still trying to see clients and they're um, the only thing that has transitioned so far is their youth and adult support groups are transitioning to online. And their 24-7 hotline is still open. So their crisis line of 800-749-8631 uh, is still open and available. Or sorry, that's the family shelters. Ah, the open arms crisis line is 325 658 so, and then as always with the family shelter or open arms or any crisis line, if there is an immediate emergency, if someone's life is in danger, your life is in danger, um, if there's a medical emergency, um, always and one. Okay. <laughs> the uh, San Angelo Early Childhood Center um, has been so right now they're not really offering anything, um, but they're trying to open up pretty quickly. Um, Mosaic, they are using, they're doing their best to practice um, social distancing and they've implemented that into a lot of their plans. Um, the YMCA of San Angelo is also closed to the general public. So the um, their day camp programs have been uh, not they're not open to the public. So right now they're partnering with Shannon Medical Center and they are only providing services to children of first responders and um, medical professionals. So that's an awesome thing that they're doing for the community, but at the same time, might not be too great for the community, but it's still an awesome thing to be able to help out those uh, medical professionals and first responders who are on the front lines of this pandemic, who are possibly being exposed, who can't have those interactions with their children like they usually do um, due to this possible exposure. Okay, and then we have the Children's Advocacy Center, the CDC. Uh, they have had to adjust due to um, community, local, state, federal guidelines and precautions because of the COVID-19 panic, but they're still focusing on offering all services as uninterrupted as they can. So um, they are doing mostly video conferencing um, and working with the skeleton crew, as most people are. Um, are doing mostly video conferencing for meetings and support groups, video conferencing for CASA cases and volunteers, and phone calls for therapy and video conferencing when it's appropriate. So their Hope House program are still having um, where forensic interviews are done for child abuse cases qualifying, are still seeing children for interviews, but they're taking their temperatures. 
um, of the children and the caregiver. And they're separating staff from families, but they're keeping communication still open. Um, so they're still trying to reach out and um, be available where they can. Their CASA program, all of their case managers are still coordinating cases with the courts and volunteers and interacting with their children through volunteering. So CASA volunteer training is still being conducted, but all online. And then their family enrichment services are operating with limited contact. Um, so they're making phone calls and video conferencing and conference calls to continue coordination. And then Okay, so now we have the Social Security Administration. So the Social Security Administration has a specific coronavirus link um, for any information of how services have transitioned or changed during this time. Um, so they are focusing on still offering all services, still providing all um, Supplement uh, social security benefits and social uh, supplemental security income payments, either through direct deposit or by the mail, whichever one is already set up in your system. Um, and then also they have a website that is great to utilize for um, any questions that you may have, and then also always contacting them directly if that is what you would like. Okay, so. Housing and bill assistance. So I wanted to start off this um, little section by uh, reiterating that um, right now we are going through a state of disaster. This is a worldwide pandemic that is creating a public health disaster. So um, there's a state of disaster declared in all counties in the state of Texas. So this means that the court systems are closed to hearing eviction cases, which means that you cannot be evicted from your home during this time. That does not mean do not pay your rent. That does not mean do not talk to your landlord. Um, that does not mean that you do not have to pay rent for the past couple of months. Um, but the Supreme Court of Texas has halted most evictions in Texas until at least May 1st. And then officers cannot post 24 hour removal notices until um, May 8th. And then many local governments have suspended evictions as well. So I linked here a few links. Um, this middle one is an awesome little, if you have any questions about um, what's going on, um, do you still owe rent? Yes. You, eviction cases are temporarily stopped, but it doesn't mean that you do not owe rent. And it only means that courts will not hear eviction cases until May 1st. Um, and then this um, helps some people because you have to get a court order before you evict a tenant. But uh, so they're not hearing cases right now. Um, but it's only temporarily stopping. You still do owe rent. You still need to talk with your um, landlord, with your apartment complex. Uh, the first thing that all of you say is contact your property manager. Make sure that you communicate the situation with them so that they are informed about what is going on. Um, only time that you can be evicted, and it states that in here, is for there you go. There it goes. You still may face eviction if you're posing an imminent threat of physical harm to others or engaging in criminal activity. Um, so it's been halted for non-payment of rent. So these are some awesome little resources of like any questions that you may have about that at this time, because I know a lot of people have stopped working or they have um, had a cut in hours. So paying those bills is really hard right now. Um, but this does not mean do not pay your rent. This just means that if you are not able to, you might be a little bit protected right now, but this does not stop them from collecting those late or charging those late fees um as well so 
those are some things to keep in mind. So always, always, always communicate with um, communicate with your with your property manager. Communicate with your leasing agent. Communicate with um, landlord, whoever it is that you need to speak with. Communicate to them. Okay. So some housing information. So ASU Housing has remained open to students who are have an emergency housing form. So there's still options for students to live on campus. Um, and then the other housing uh, information is the Housing Authority on San, of San Angelo. So they've closed their offices, but they are still um, they're close to the public, but they're still accepting applications and doing everything that they can. And then they asked to contact case manager specifically, and they listed every all of their the names of all of their case managers and their um, roles. So that's all their contact information. Um, and then the work for Solutions of the Concha Valley. This is an awesome resource if you needed to file for unemployment, if you needed to um, uh, just find some resources. Um, their website also always has, or also has links of videos of, um, short YouTube videos of like transitioning to working from home, how to be productive from home, how to uh, work online. So they have some good educational resources, even if you do not need their um, unemployment benefit services. And then they're also asking um, everyone with the 325 area code to call um, from one to five, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So those are the days and the that's the times and the days that they are asking uh, 325 area codes to call just so that they are not flooded, um, even though, I can't imagine how they wouldn't be. Um, and then the Concha Valley Community Community Action Agency. This is an awesome resource that is helping that helps with um, bill payments, and um, they have several other programs as well. They have several programs to help with um, different um, utility payments. So they're an awesome resource as well. So if you want to look a little more into them. Um, and then also the city of San Angelo is not cutting off any water supplies right now. So um, the last update that I saw from the Community Action Agency is that their cost of water funds is not accepting any more applications. But at this time, the city of San Angelo is not turning off anyone's water, but they are still collecting those late fees and things like that. So things to keep in mind. All right. Now on to some food assistance. Excuse me. All right. This is a little more geared towards local um, availability. So there are so many churches in San Angelo and they all have, uh, most of them have a food bank that is open for at least one hour during the week. Um, <clears throat> so you can always contact these churches. Um, and then I have their, uh, the times that their food bank is open during the week. Um, so of course we have the ASU Ram Pantry here on campus. Uh, they're housed in the Vet Center right now because of the UC being closed. So there are some great people working in there and um, they have some awesome essential items. So they have a lot to offer here at the ASU uh, Ram Pantry. And it's open Monday through Friday from eight to five. So this is gonna be the easiest to access as it's open the most during the week. And then we have the Freedom Fellowship Church, which open Fridays from 1 30 to 6. The First Christian Church, which open on Mondays from 2 to 3 30. The Harris Avenue Baptist Church, which their food bank is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
the St. Paul Presbyterian Church. Their food bank is open Mondays from 12 to 1 and Wednesdays from 5 to 6. Uh, Grape Creek Church, their food bank is open on Wednesdays from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, the Rose Street Ministries, their food bank is open Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Rose Street Ministries also has several other programs to help with the community, so um, they're also a great place to look into um, if you need anything during this time. And then we have the House of Restoration, which their food bank is open Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then the Bethel United Methodist, their food bank is open Mondays from 10.30 to 12.30. And then um, also McDonald's, all San Angelo, Brownwood and Snyder locations are offering free breakfast for children aged 12 and under, uh, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is to help combat the closure of schools and um, <clears throat> children not having access to breakfast. So that's a pretty awesome thing that they're doing. Uh, I just wanted to include that in there. I'm sure there are several other restaurants that are doing things for students, for our youngins as well. Um, all right, so some crisis hotlines. So I wanted to start this off again, as I previously stated, if you're in a state of emergency, if there is, uh, if your life or someone else's life is in danger, or if there is a medical emergency, 911. Um, there is a non-emergent police line for the um, San Angelo area, for every community area. So that's a good number to look up for your local community, what your local uh, non-emergent police line is. If you're in a situation where it might not be a direct emergency or you don't want to tie up a 911 line, um, <clears throat> that's a great number to have in your phone. All right, so starting off, we have the Suicide Prevention Lifeline which is 1-800-273-8255, which is free, free and confidential support for people in distress 24 seven. Um, this is a super awesome resource. And if you are having suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideations or intent, um, please reach out to, there are several points of access that you can reach out to. Um, and then we also have the disaster distress helpline. So as I stated before, this is a state of disaster. We're going through a global pandemic with, we don't know what is, when this is going to end. We don't know how many people are going to get sick. We don't know if we've been, um, for certain, that you're not, that you're not going to get sick or a family member. So <clears throat> this is a state disaster, and um, there is a disaster distress hotline, 1-800-985-5990. Uh, which provides immediate crisis counseling related to disasters 24 seven. And then we also have the ASU crisis line here, just 325-486-6345. ASU crisis line if you're in a state of crisis or if you um, can't get a hold of the counseling center for any reason um, or if it's on a weekend or what anything like that um, don't, uh, feel free to contact them the ASU University Police that's a good number to have in your phone anyway uh, 325-942-2071 if you need any help if you're on campus or um, even putting this number on your phone, if you come back in the fall, it's good to have it and just have it ready to go in case you encounter any emergency. All right. And then the Tom Green County Sheriff's Office phone number, 325-655-8111. And then also 211 Texas. So 211. <laughs> 211 Texas is an awesome resource. If you need uh, service or if you need any um, like uh, a resource and you don't really know what you're looking for and um, you don't know what's available or you can't find what you need, um, 2 on one Texas is an awesome resource that they will help link you. They will link you to resources. They will tell you what is available in your area and it might be 
um, they ha have information that is not um, easily Googleable. So they're an awesome resource to have too. All right. So also there are several crisis lines for several different things. There are local ones and there are national ones. So <clears throat> there's a veterans crisis line, 800-273-8255, uh, press one. So if you're a veteran in distress, um, in crisis, there's a line specifically targeted for veterans. Um, our nation's military are very, uh, can face very unique and individual problems. So there is a line uh, dedicated for veterans. And then the National Vic Center for Victims of Crime, uh, one eight five five four victim or 484-2846. <laughs> been a victim of crime and you're in a crisis, that is a great resource to reach out to. And then the MHMR of the Contra Valley has a crisis hotline. If you need help, call the 24-7 crisis hotline at 325-653-5933 or 1-800-395-8965. So um, a crisis can happen at any time. Uh, so their MCOT uh, mobile crisis intervention team, mobile crisis outreach team, um, will be available to you. <laughs> and then the Open Arms REAP Crisis Center, uh, their 24-hour hotline of 625, or 325-325-658-8888, or 800-656-4673. Um, you have been a victim of sexual assault, or um, <clears throat> they also have LGBT outreach. Um, that is a great resource. And then the National Sexual Assault Hotline is 1-800-656-4673, which is the hotline listed there, I just realized, but that is the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Okay, so then the Salvation Army has a emotional and spiritual care hotline available from eight, the eight, seven days a week. So that is 844-458-HOPE or 4673. So that is an awesome uh, resource if you are having any uh, emotional or spiritual distress, if you're having a crisis of faith or anything like that, the Salvation Army has a hotline that can help. And then the family shelter in town, if you are a victim of uh, domestic abuse, domestic violence, um, their crisis line is 800-749-8631. And then the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Council for Contra Valley, or ADAC, has a 24-hour crisis line, which is 1-800-880-9641. So if you are um, struggling with any alcohol or drug abuse, any substances, um, or staying sober during this time. Uh, I know a lot of people are cooped up at home. So you have an uh, alcohol addiction problem that might be um, very hard to maintain sobriety during this time. So they do have a 24 hour crisis line, as well as the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration, or SAMHSA, has a national helpline. Um, 1-800-662-HELP or 4357, also known as Treatment Referral Routing Service, or um, their 1-800-487-4889. They can also help link you up with local resources in your area. Um, so if you're not in the Contra Valley area, SAMHSA is an awesome resource to help you find those substance abuse mental health services and your local area. All right, <laughs> reading all the numbers, man. Okay, so I think that I, that was the last bit of information. And then also a great resource is um, utilizing me. I provide case management services at ASU. So if you're feeling confused or overwhelmed, please reach out to ASU Counseling Services at 325. 
uh, 942-2371. I help students with navigate resources, whether that is on campus or in the community or in the local community. So um, <clears throat> if you're having financial trouble, if you're having academic struggles, um, financial struggles, anything like that, I can help you kind of formulate some goals and create an action plan to achieve those goals and link you up with some of these resources or some more different resources that were not covered in this um, or resources that are local to your area. Um, yeah, so um, <coughs> that's it for my presentation. Uh, stop sharing. All right, so um, thank you for uh, listening and joining in. Um, Sorry, we had some technical difficulties on Friday, so I had to go over this again, kind of solo, but um, if you are here for Friday's presentation, thank you very much, and um, I hope that you guys have a great uh, afternoon, a great day, um, whenever you're watching this, if this is uploaded to YouTube, which I think it should be, um, and then, of course, if you have any questions about anything at all, or you're struggling during this time, you're confused, or you just need a little bit of support, um, contact the ASU Counseling Services at 325-942-2371. We are here for you, and we can help link you up with whatever it is that you might be needing right now. Um, so thank you.